Apparently, uh, may have gotten infected at a point, but walked through the scene, the uh, screening. It was discovered that uh, he was positive for coronavirus. Nigeria records first case of coronavirus. Health minister says patient is clinically stable. Federal government delegation assesses the impact and challenges of border closure in the northwest. House ad hoc on project execution tax heads of ministry and agencies on effective delivery of key projects. Good evening and welcome to Network News at 9. I am Juma Yusuf. Reading with me tonight are Jennifer Igwe from Lagos and Kelly Gochin is in Joss. Many thanks for joining us. We we'll begin with health matters as the Federal Ministry of Health has confirmed the first case of coronavirus COVID-19 in Nigeria. The victim is an Italian who works in Nigeria and returned from Milan, Italy to Lagos on Tuesday. Minister of Health Dr. Osage Henry, who announced this at a news conference in Abuja describes the condition of the patient who is being managed at the Infectious Diseases Hospital in Nyaba, Lagos as clinically stable with no serious symptoms. Health correspondent Rabi Abdullah completes the report. Since the first outbreak of coronavirus, COVID-19 was reported in China and its subsequent spread to other countries, which is a tendency fact, Nigeria has been on its toes to prevent the spread of the virus to its shores. That effort has now become a combination of prevention, response and containment following the importation of the virus into the country. The gentleman who came here apparently uh, may have gotten infected at a point, but walked through the scene, the uh, screening, uh, with no symptoms. And by the time he got to his house, I think a day or uh, two after, he started to feel unwell. And uh, wisely enough, he went to a hospital, and there the doctors examined him. And I believe they found that malaria was negative and they knew the travel history and immediately, immediately referred him to, uh, for a test in Lagos at the uh, Luth uh, testing center. And there it was discovered that uh, he was positive for coronavirus and immediately put under isolation. The identity of patients is not generally released except with their permission. The health minister reassured Nigerians of the country's prepared capacity to deal with the virus. The government of Nigeria through the Federal Ministry of Health has been strengthening measures to ensure an outbreak in Nigeria is controlled and contained quickly. And we will use all measures and resources made available by the government to respond to this case. This confirmed case makes Nigeria the 45th country that has reported COVID-19 outbreak. In Abuja, Rabi Abdullah, NTA News. Meanwhile, line listing and tracing of individuals who had close contact with the index coronavirus case in Lagos continues as key players in government and emergency sectors are collaborating to ensure the virus does not spread. Joy Ken Akpakoya has details. A male of Italian descent is still being managed at the mainland hospital, Yaba, and his handlers say his chances of recovery are high. He's doing very well. Let me say he's doing very well. He's quite, he's quite, he's quite healthy. He's doing, he's doing very, very well. He's, he also has a very high spirit. I think we learned a lot from the last Ebola uh, case, and that is why this patient was, uh, was identified early enough, because he went to a clinic, he gave his history, and the doctor immediately suspected that this could be coronavirus. I mean, if if uh, we, we are not uh, uh, expecting it, or if uh, we are not well prepared, we won't know. We will have missed it. So somebody identified uh, this case and then brought the, the case to us. And then we also did what we were supposed to do: we sent samples to, to the lab, and then the result came back as uh, as positive. 
The state governor, Babajide Sonwolu, while calling for calm, insists that all measures for effective containment of the virus are in place, adding that the state's incidence command system has been activated. And we're ready. Our facility has been fortified to um, continue, if need be, of any form of tests and um, containment information will continue to speak to each other um, on, on a case-by-case -case basis and want to assure our citizens that um, for us here in Lagos, um, everything that needs to be done, we're doing and we'll continue to have dialogue you know, and, and support. As of now, we started to trace the movement of this traveler from the airport through Lagos to Open State. And we are busy identifying any possible person that may have come in contact with him so that we can start our isolation and containment exercise to ensure that we break the cycle of transmission. Some Lagosians are a bit apprehensive. This is because of the way the city is structured, its dense population, and a number of slums. But surprisingly, not many are even aware of the disease. It's coronavirus. coronavirus. I don't know about that. I don't know. You have to tell me what to do to protect myself. Citizens are, however, hopeful that just like the Ebola situation, Nigeria will effectively manage coronavirus and show. Joy Ken Abakpuya, NTN News. In the meantime, the Ogun State Government says it has taken measures to ensure all those identified with the index case of coronavirus in Ogun State are quarantined. The State Governor, Prince Dakwa Abiodun, at a press briefing employed its residents not to panic as the state is on top of the situation. The report. Governor Dakwa Abiodun said the identified coronavirus patient, 44-year-old Italian national, is a visiting consultant to a cement factory in a Wekoro local government area of Ogun State. He explained that the man arrived in Nigeria on Monday, 24th of February, slept in Lagos, where he had made contact with three people before his arrival in Ogun State. We stepped up the advocacy, um, given our literature, so that people understand this virus for what it is. I am aware that we are presently uh, sharing a particular app to our primary health care workers that will allow them to uh, use and identify um, likely uh, um, suspects. The governor explained that he has reached out to the Federal Ministry of Health to upgrade the Olabisi Onobanjo University Teaching Hospital, OOTH, which is currently the isolation center in the state, to biosecurity center so as to be able to conduct corona tests. Meanwhile, the government has advised anybody with cold, cough, or any other symptoms to visit government-owned hospital and in case of emergency, reports should be sent through the following digital emergency centers created by the states. 0801-889-78393 or 0801-889-78392. Earlier on today, Nigerian students from China's Nanjing Lukou International Airport, Beijing, who arrived at the Inamdi Azikiwe International Airport, Abuja, via Cairo, has been screened and confirmed to be without symptoms of coronavirus. Emmanuel Anyumiro reports that the student was conducted through primary and secondary screening at the airport. The female student, who prefers not to be seen on camera, said she came in on holiday and will soon return to China. She is among several others who have been returning to Nigeria through other countries. Though she doesn't have any symptoms, but we're taking her number, we we'll keep calling her to ask her how is she. We give her a flyer, so our number is there. If there's any symptoms, she can call us, talk to us. We are ready to help and come. Okay. Meanwhile, it's been about seven weeks since the outbreak of the Delhi coronavirus in China, which has infected over 83,000 persons across 53 countries, with not less than 2,800 deaths. Although a new case of an infected person was confirmed in Lagos yesterday, 
However, the challenges by the Port Health Services conducting screening exercises at the Namdi Azigwe International Airport, Abuja, is the case of some high profile individuals who are usually in a hurry to go but not willing to fill their primary screening form, which contain information about the travel history of a passenger, including other symptoms. You know, when they enter the plane, feel it to, for, them to feel, for them to fill their forms, uh, uh, they are relaxed at that point. But when they come here, they are always stand stop. Everybody is rushing to go back. So that's the challenge we have. You may say, I don't have fever, but as you are passing through the thermal machines, if you detect it. So over here, I'm kind of impressed because, you see, you get over here, they will check your temperature, you fill a form. After filling the form, they will have an access to you where you come from. They will trace all the background so that they will be able to get back to you. And it's impressive. Normal flight activities have been ongoing at the Abuja airport. Emmanuel Ayemiro, NTA News. Thank you, Emmanuel. We hear more stringent safety measures are being put in place for proper screening of inbound passengers at the Malam Amino Kanu International Airport to prevent the importation of COVID-19 into Nigeria. The measures airport authorities say are necessary due to increased traffic at the international wing of the airport. Elizabeth Iyala, Lami, Lami Do reports. During the recent case of coronavirus disease in Lagos State, the Federal Ministry of Health has strengthened measures to control and contain the situation in the country. Here in Aminukano International Airport, measures have been put in place to see that passengers arriving at the airport are checked thoroughly before giving passage into the state. They go through the thermal scanner behind me over there uh, to check their temperature. And if that temperature is above normal, we keep them for a while, we ask them further questions, we examine them, and those that qualify as persons of interest, we further monitor them. Some of the passengers undergoing screening spoke. Where I came from, the screening is not that much, it's not that um, stressful, do you understand? But coming to Nigeria, the screening is more difficult. They even present forms to us in case if you have any, if you experience any kind of fever there, you have to feel it there so that our people will be able to, if you have any kind of, that kind of virus, they will be able to identify it. Before we were given access into the international arrival hall, we were given personal protective equipment for protection. Some airlines have already stopped taking passengers to certain countries, while others continue with their operational schedules. From Kano, Elizabeth Yilala Mido, NTE News. Information and Culture Minister Lai Mohammed has directed all information dissemination platforms under his ministries as well as the National Orientation Agency to embark on an intensive awareness and sensitization campaign in a bid to arm Nigerians with the necessary information that will protect them to stay healthy. The Minister says that is in Abuja. Anthony Fosson has the details. With coronavirus now in Nigeria following the first confirmed case, the Federal Ministry of Information and Culture has come up with a sensitization and enlightenment plan, as explained by the minister, Lai Mohammed. The NTA, FRCN, NAN, Vaughan, and the National Retention Agency have been directed to intensify their ongoing sensitization and enlightenment campaigns to arm Nigerians with the necessary information to stay well. And the National Orientation Agency, NOA, with its wide reach, office and all the 774 local governments, is pushing the various sensitization enlightenment programs to all the nooks and crannies of the country. We know that at times like this, purveyors of fake news and disinformation usually ramp up their acts. We are therefore urging Nigerians not to fall for the antics of purveyors of fake news and disinformation. Fortunately, Facebook is working with us in this regard. They have asked Nigerians to report any false or misleading report on Facebook and Instagram pages so they can immediately bring them down. The patient, who is an Italian, is said to be in a stable condition and being treated at the infectious disease hospital, Yaba, Lagos. Anthony Forson, NTA News.
and to continue to educate Nigerians on the coronavirus care and all about it going on around the world. I'm being joined in the studio by Minister of Health, Dr. Osage Henry, on issues for the Minister of Health. Making the headlines. Welcome to Good Morning. Welcome Thank you. To Network News. You know, COVID-19 in Nigeria is marking, making a lot of headlines. There's a lot of scare. But at the same time, most Nigerians are not aware of it. So what happened between the early hours of today after the first COVID-19 victim was identified? Yeah, we had a press conference in which uh, we uh, gave the whole story of uh, how it came about, okay. the index case that entered Nigeria and use the opportunity to enlighten uh, Nigerians on what to do and how to take care of themselves. As we have said, the uh, putative point of entry will be by air. And uh, we are doing uh, good surveillance at the uh, points of entry by air at the international airports. Mm. The first line of defense is the port health services who continue to practice and carry out simulations and uh, do all the things that are necessary to check on importation of uh, the COVID-19. Okay, how ready are we at the entry points? Because today we had that a, a student, a Nigerian from China, came in today. What happened actually? Well, yes, that's not the first time a Nigerian from China has come in. Uh, we do a screening. It's a passive skin, a screening. When you are passing by, there's a camera that captures you and uh, those of you have a temperature. But there are people who do not yet have a temperature who have been infected, if they were recently infected, and uh, they will uh, uh, get by. But uh, once you are coming from a, a high burden country, as we have seen, it's not only China now. There are other countries that have high burden. If you are coming from a high burden country, you will be subjected to some uh, questions. And uh, of course, every incoming passenger has to fill a questionnaire, mm. which we have continued to refine. And uh, the questions will now uh, center on your uh, travel history. And if you have given the history of having been a high burden country, you will now uh, be given a phone number to call. And you will also obtain your phone number and monitor you daily for 14 days. Okay, 14 days. Um, the first victim is in Lagos. Lagosians just woke up this morning and found out that they have a victim in Lagos. So what is the panic like? Well, this gentleman came in from Milan and uh, apparently he was uh, totally free of symptoms. And uh, by the time he came in, uh, he was uh, not detected on the th uh, thermal scanner. Okay. But a day after, he started feeling unwell and he reported himself to a hospital. plenty of information about COVID-19. Mm. The doctor examined him and very likely did a malaria test, a rapid test, and found it negative, and sent him on for further examination to the IDH in Lagos. Yeah. And there, there was a test carried out, and it was found to be positive. We hear is a, is a patient, not a victim, actually. What, there's a news trending on the social media that alcohol kills coronavirus. What's your take on that? Well, uh, for disinfection, yes, we say alcohol-based uh, uh, substances, uh, uh, gel or, or liquid will destroy any kind of germs if you have them on your hand or on the surface. But that does not mean you drink it and you uh, get yourself cured. That does not mean that. So it's just for surface germ control. Okay, so what advice do you have for Nigerians on the last note? Before? First, sanitation. Keep your hands clean. Uh, avoid uh, crowds. And uh, we advise social distancing, keep away from uh, people who might be coughing or sneezing. And uh, we also advise that if you do not have anything urgent in any of these high burden countries, delay your travel there if you're intending to travel uh, until the situation gets better. So non-essential travels should be withheld until uh, the situation has improved. And it will be a good thing too if other countries will do the same to advise their citizens to withhold non-essential travel, particularly those countries, the high burden countries. Understand that uh, China already does an exit screening, uh, screen all passengers who are leaving and uh, retrain, retain those who are uh, suspicious or who, are, who have a fever or who have symptoms uh, okay. and, and stops them from traveling. Okay, thank you so much. We have been discussing with Dr. Osage Ehenri, that's the Minister of Health here in Nigeria. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank on you. Network News. Thank you. Thank you. And not just 
the scare, the oil sector has also been affected as oil prices plunged through their lowest in more than a year, putting them on track for the biggest weekly decline in more than four years. As the spread of the coronavirus creates fears of slowing global demand, oil markets are hoping for steeper supply quotes by the organization of the petroleum exporting countries, OPEC audit allies, including Russia, who have said they will take a responsible approach in the wake of the virus outbreak. On the other hand, investors are increasingly worried the epidemic could turn into a pandemic as the virus has spread beyond its epicenter in China to 53 countries. The producer group OPEC Plus, which is currently reducing output by roughly 1 to 2 million barrels per day to support prices, is due to meet in Vienna on March 5th to 6th. In a related development, OPEC and its allies are displaying a renewed commitment to reach an accord that will stabilize all markets hit hard by the coronavirus. All eyes will be on the group's meeting next week after crude prices slumped to one year low below $46 a barrel in New York, raising concerns for Nigeria's budget benchmark of $57 per barrel. The disease has slashed fuel demand in China and threatens global economic growth. OPEC Secretary General Mohamed Burkindo says there is a renewed commitment in the OPEC Plus Alliance to build the consensus for a joint action in mitigating the current hyper volatility in the market. Burkindo said the OPEC Plus partnership has approved effective in balancing world crude markets since it was founded in late 2016 and will do so again. You're watching Network News at 9. Time now for a break. The news returns shortly. Don't go away. Thanks for Mahmoud Buhari has restated the commitment of the federal government towards deepening existing relations between Nigeria and Sahrawi Arab Democratic Republic. The president gave the assurance while exchanging views with the outgoing Sahrawi ambassador to Nigeria. State House correspondent Adam Sambu reports. Ambassador Sadiq Bashir of the Sahrawi Arab Democratic Republic was in the State House on a farewell visit after completing his tour of duty in Nigeria spanning three and a quarter years. President Buhari congratulated the outgoing envoy on his accomplishments in the country. He said the relationship between Nigeria and the Sahrawi Arab Democratic Republic was strengthened during his stay in Nigeria and promised to ensure that it remained so. He therefore wished the envoy well in his future endeavors. Ambassador Sadiq Bashir had told President Buhari that he had a very good experience serving in Nigeria, during which the relations between the two countries improved greatly. The outgoing envoy expressed the belief that Nigeria and his country would continue to collaborate more effectively for enhanced mutual benefits. Ambassador Sadiq Bashir assumed duty in Nigeria on the 8th of November 2016. Records show that Nigeria recognized Sahrawi Arab Democratic Republic on November 11, 1984, and formal diplomatic relations were established on the same day. The Sahrawi Embassy was opened in Abuja in late 2000. From the State House, Adamu Sambu, NTA News. Still staying with the presidency, President Mahmoud Buhari has felicitated with Barrister Mohammed Sambu Adiu on the conferment of Magajin Rafin Gwandu by Gwandu Emirate Council, urging him to use the opportunity to serve his community and the country. In a statement by the special advisor to the President on Media and Publicity, Femi Adishna, the President joins family, friends and the Emirate Council in celebrating the historic and joyous event, which will hold on Saturday, February 20th. 2019, 2020. President Buhari prays the Almighty God to grant him good health, strength, and more wisdom to serve humanity. And reports just reaching us, President Muhammad Buhari has approved the retirement of Mrs. Winfred Ekenem Oyo Ita from the Federal Civil Service with effect from Thursday, 27 February 2020. Permanent Secretary General Service in the Office of the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Olusha Adekunle, in a statement said, President Buhari affirms that it will be without prejudice to the ongoing investigation into certain allegations against her.
in line with Section 171 of the 1999 Constitution. The President has approved the appointment of Dr. Foloshade Yemi Essan as the substantive head of the Civil Service of the Federation with effect from February 28, 2020. Until now, she was the acting head of the Civil Service of the Federation, a position she assumed since 18 September 2019. The President enjoyed how to use her wealth of experience in the new position so that government can deliver on the new priority areas of development. The federal government has embarked on impact assessment of the national border drill to generate input from stakeholders within the border communities to cushion the effects and further address the challenges of the closure. Shehu Adamu reports that a delegation from the office of the secretary to the government of the federation was at Jibia. Kongolam and Magatari border towns in Kasina and Jigawa state respectively for an on the sport assessment. The report. Seven months into the ongoing national border drill operations and the subsequent federal government directive on the ban of the sales of petroleum products within towns 20 kilometers to border posts, stakeholders acknowledge significant reduction in the proliferation of arms and smuggling of contraband into the country. Despite these achievements, residents of the towns appeal to the federal government to reconsider its policy on the ban of the sales of petroleum products in their domain, which affect commercial activities. In addition, the district head of Megatari town, Deng Isan Gumel, Kabiru Al Hassan, advised security operatives to address the problem of the influx of camel herders from the neighboring region republic whose activities cause road accidents in the area. Leader of the Delegation and Deputy Director of Economic Monitoring, Multilateral and Research in the Office of the Secretary to the Government of the Federation said the visit is aimed at generating inputs that will guide the federal government to review some of its policies concerning the border closure. And the most important thing is to get the message across to the rightful place, which is the government, the relevant government office. Sector 4 coordinator of the National Border Drill Operations covering Northwest called for more understanding as the exercise intends to ensure security of lives and property as well as repositioning the nation's economy. Their complaint is that if they can designate at least one fling or two fling station, that can serve their people because they are suffering. At all the places visited, challenges were distributed and filled for onward submission to the higher authorities. In Kazina, Shehu Adamu, NTA News. In an effort to tackle the humanitarian crisis in the state, Kaduna State Government is ready to work with the Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development by building a strong network with the Ministry to alleviate the various humanitarian challenges faced in the state. This was emphasized when the Governor of Kaduna State, Nasir Elufai, paid a solidarity visit to the Ministry, where he also added that Kaduna State is benefiting immensely from the various social investment programs of the federal government and with more support from the ministry, Kaduna State will continue to tackle its humanitarian crisis. These uh, humanitarian challenges continue to evolve. You solve one and another one emerges tomorrow and that's why uh, a ministry like this must be uh, policy oriented, must have sound people that will be looking at issues and thinking through uh, solutions to them on a continuing basis. The Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development, Saidia Omar Farouk, said that mitigating humanitarian crisis requires collective efforts from critical stakeholders for effective preparedness and response to achieve the set goal for the country. We are inviting all state uh, emergency management agencies to come to Abuja so that we will discuss we have a workshop for two days to look at all these critical issues. The government is also uh, doing its best to see that these uh, issues are addressed and these humanitarian interventions are taken to these affected populations. The minister also appreciated the efforts of international donors for their support in meeting Nigeria's humanitarian challenges. 
The Minister of Niger Delta Affairs, Senator Godswill Apapio, has inaugurated the Presidential Monitoring Committee of the Niger Delta Development Commission, NDDC, with a charge on them to ensure the change agenda of President Mohamed Buhari is brought to bear in the region. Senator Apapio, who is also the chairman of the committee, however, expressed displeasure that the anticipated progress in the Niger Delta region is long overdue and urged the committee members to closely follow developmental efforts of the federal government in order to change the pattern. Mr. President, in his wisdom, and as a result of his commitment to see a new Niger Delta, a new NDDC, he wants to see a region where uh, somebody can turn around and say, yes, there is value for money. He wants to see a region where profligacy and the cesspool of corruption is brought to an end. Joseph Johnson reports that the inauguration is described as one of the landmark strides of the present administration towards addressing the gap in government oversight of the Commission's operations in moving the region forward. And efforts to empower women, Nigerian women are conversing for more inclusion as some groups clamor for gender, mainstreaming and social justice to top discussion at the 64th session of the United Nations Commission on the status of women scheduled for early March in New York, USA. Momso Damien Detti reports. Cut across race and culture, their agenda here is to advance the cause of women world over. This is in preparation to the International Day of Women observed on the 8th of March annually. I am Generation Equality Realizing Women's Rights. The team aligns with the UN Women's New Multigenerational Campaign, Generation Equality, to mark the 25th anniversary of the Beijing Declaration and Platform for Action. The Generation Equality Campaign is a bold statement which demands equal pay, equal sharing of unpaid care work. Um, seeing at the 2019 polls the relative number of women dropping even further to below 5%. <laughs> While recognizing those challenges, I think we must also recognize that there is a real opportunity to actually change. In continuation of this quest, the women also meet to deliberate on issues they will be presenting at the 64th session of the United Nations Commission on the Status of Women, scheduled for the 9th of March this year. Other areas of deliberations will center on climate change and violence against women. In Abuja, Momso Damien Dati, NTA News. Jennifer Igwe is in our Lagos studio to give us trending stories from that axis. Hello, Jennifer. Thank you, Jumai, and welcome to Lagos. 450,000 Nigerian youths have been trained and equipped with technical skills in various fields of endeavors to address the problem of unemployment in the last three and a half years. Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment, Adeni Adebayo, who revealed the figure, said the federal government is committed to his mandate of poverty eradication. Obalode Salami reports. Nigeria, with its growing population over the years, has been grappling with youth unemployment and the provision of requisite technical skills for infrastructural development. As a way of addressing the challenge, the Industrial Training Fund, under the Federal Ministry of Industry, Trade and Investment, has empowered thousands of youths with skills and startup packs for their businesses. You can see that uh, 450,000 people over the last uh, how many years is uh, it's not a it's not, it's not a little figure. It's a it's a very large figure, and um, I am very, I personally am very impressed with what they are doing in the ITF. There's a lot of work that we're doing in various areas to try to see to it that uh, we reduce the unemployment rate in this country. In fulfillment of its mandate of equipping Nigerians with skills for employability and entrepreneurship, new steps are on the way to accommodate more youths for skills acquisition programs. As well as propel the federal government's agenda with respect to productivity and economic growth of the national economy through the provision of infrastructural development that will enhance job creation and entrepreneurial development of Nigerians. Given the rate at which technology is redefining the nature of jobs now and in the future, we must empower our youth 
with new skills that will enable them to become wealth and job creators. In Lagos, Abolade Salami, NTA News. That's all for now. The news continues shortly after the break. Stay tuned. Welcome back. Nigeria and guidance before embarking on any mission and allow the fear of God to reign supreme in their relationship with God and humankind. Primate Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion, Most Reverend Nicholas Oko, stated this at the dedication of St. Peter's Anglican Church, Ikeri, Ekit State. Yemi Dalemo reports that Vice President Yemi Oshibajo, former Head of State General Yakubu Gowan and other eminent personalities attended the event. Eminent personalities in Nigeria and beyond converge on Nikere Kiti to dedicate the beautiful edifice donated by Chief Wali Olanipekun to the Church of Nigerian Agnika Communion. Vice President Yemi Oshibaju, former head of State General Yakubu Gowon, described the donation as a special seed to God that will end the donor eternal blessings from God. David only thought about, only thought about building a house for God, and God established his generations forever and said that he was always going to his and that there will always be a man on the throne of David. You can imagine what God will do for a man who not only thought about it, but built a house of God. The dedication of this ultra modern building is another landmark. Primate Church of the Lord Anglican Communion, Most Reverend Nicholas Oku, urged Nigerians to always consult God before embarking on any mission. Ikiti State Governor Dr. Kai Defayemi and the donor Chief Wale Olanipekun SAN said the occasion remains that give to God. I agree with me that it is the very epitome of all that Ikiti is known for. He reversed God and he has also given to God a little of what God has given to him. Highlights of the occasion include the dedication of the ultra modern edifice and the cutting of the cake from Ikere Kitsi Yemi Dalimo, NT News. To ensure transparency in affairs of ministries and agencies, the House of Representatives says those at the helms of affairs and ministries and other agencies of government must be pragmatic in their approach to execution of key projects and programs towards achieving effective service to the people. The ad hoc committee investigating alleged non-remittance of one trillion naira of unspent budgeted funds during the ongoing hearing noted that some government organizations wait for 100% budgetary release before they commence implementation of vital projects. Such attitude, it stress signals failure. It also found that infractions perpetrated by agencies in procurement procedure, pointing out that such practices adversely affect the federal government's anti-corruption fight. For 100% payment, payment of a particular job, process payment, 100% execution done in two days, You are what today, after next, uh, uh, tomorrow, the next day, there was uh, uh, authorization for payment. The Ninth Assembly says the committee is committed to working with the executive as they both have unity of purpose of building a legacy of good governance and bring accountability to the people. The National Blood Bank and Federal School of Survey were among agencies that appeared before the Art Corp Committee Friday. The Nigerian Society of Engineers is partnering the Nigerian Television Authority in exposing activities of quacks in the engineering profession as well as celebrate the contributions of the profession to sustainable development. The partnership is being strengthened with a visit of the engineering body to the NTA management. Benny Adams reports. From the signals on the satellite dish antenna to the transmission down to the reception in the comfort of your room. The engineer and technician are involved. So also their involvement in virtually every aspect of our day-to-day -day life. The visit by the Nigerian Society of Engineers to the NTA management is in three folds. We need outfits like yours to be able to expose all those who are not engineers, 
calling themselves engineers? One of their own and executive director of engineering, Stephen Opanachi, on behalf of the director general of the NTA, reeled out the contributions of engineering in the successful operations of NTA in national and international assignments. In 2018, engineering came up with an agenda of the strategies of how to cover the election 2019 in a way that it will be effective and efficient. And the DG came to open the event and said, we are going to cover this event in a way that it has never been done in the history of this country. This year's event seeks to highlight the achievements of engineers and engineering in today's world and improve public understanding of how engineering and technology is central to sustainable development. Benny Adams, NTA News. Jaws is the last port of call on Network News today and Caleb is waiting with more reports. Jumai and welcome to Jaws. The strategic components of managing population explosion in developing countries with Nigeria at the center stage resonated at a special session to critically examine the challenges associated with population growth. Saadat to Mohamed Kafa reports that Chinese ambassador to Nigeria is raising the concern of unplanned population threat to development. Population remains one of the variable vehicles for imitation of best human developmental models, but if not properly managed, becomes a threat to humanity. This dominated the platform for sharing Chinese experience of population growth strategies and control models as precautions for developmental crisis. Comprehensive demographic data and sustainable policy reforms in line with global practice will assist in containing outbreak of diseases like the coronavirus. See, we have been working very closely with the international partners, uh, the WHO, including Nigeria. We are sharing the information. The government agencies are communicating very well. The spirit of dealing with consequences of overpopulation in Nigeria is craving solutions to factors like crimes, disease, poverty, human trafficking and unemployment. Uh, the brand new center for, uh, for Chinese studies and the whole essence of that is to study and learn from the Chinese experience. The brainstorming session, which attracted professionals of senior course 42 across fields in the National Institute for Policy and Strategic Studies, is gradually bringing much knowledge to bear as policy implementators. In just Saada Tumamad Kafa, NTA News. That's it from JAWS, but we shall pause for another commercial break. The network news will continue shortly. This is the glorious exit of late Mrs. Hannah Richard Epele at the ripe age of 98 years. She is survived by children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren. Burial arrangements are as follows. Service of songs on Tuesday, 3rd of March, 2020 at LifeGate Church, 90 Stadium Road, Rumo Masi, Port Harcourt, time 4 to 5 p.m. Christian Wakekeep on Thursday, 5th of March, 2020 at 9 p.m. Internment on Friday, 6th of March, 2020 by 12 noon at the family compound at Mpumpuevula, Waterside by Umogele Community via Ohanku Road, Aba Abia State. Adio, Mama. Signed by Jake Epele on behalf of the family. With profound sense of loss but gratitude to God for a life well spent, the Datong Longjan family announces the passing of its beloved husband, father, uncle, senator and elder statesman, distinguished Senator Ignatius Datong Longjan on the 10th of February 2020 following a brief illness. Senator Ignatius Longjan represented Plateau South Senatorial District in the current Senate of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. He had served in the Ministry of External Affairs as a diplomat. Senator Longjan was elected Deputy Governor Plateau State from 2011 to 2015. He is survived by a wife, three children, three grandchildren, and many relations. A vigil mass holds on Sunday, 1st March 2020 at St. Louis Catholic Church, Jaws, by 6 p.m., while the Requiem Mass follows on Monday, 2nd March 2020 by 9 a.m., also at St. Louis Church, Jaws. Then the 
departure to his hometown, Kwa, in Kwanpan local government area of Plata State for internment, Dr. Gurumwal George Longjan, son for the family. Thanks for rejoining us. Italian-based Nigerian player King Udo has been infected with coronavirus. He plays with Italian Serie C pianist. He has become the first footballer to have contacted the virus. This and more with Tamara Ebue on Sports Update. African table tennis legend Funke Oshonaike on Friday qualified for her seventh Olympic Games, thereby becoming the first African woman to set the record. She defeated Cameroon's Sarah Hanfu four sets to one in a deciding match to pick Olympic table tennis events. Funke Oshonaike joins fellow Nigerian of Young Adam, who was the first Nigerian table tennis player to qualify for the Tokyo 2020 Olympics. In handball, safety shooters and civil defenders continue their bids to win the inaugural North Central Handball League, which ends on Saturday at the Moshud Abiola National Stadium, Abuja, while the anticipation lingers on. Niger United on Friday, after beating Confluence Stars 33 to 24 goals and Rising Stars losing 30 to 33 to Correction Boys. In football, Five games will be decided Saturday in the English Premier League, with Watford welcoming league toppers Liverpool, as Bournemouth plays Chelsea at the Vitality Stadium, with the game live on NTA at 4 p.m. Meanwhile, the draws for the Europa Round of 16 has been concluded. England's Manchester United will face Austria's Lask. Spanish Sevilla will face Italian's Roma. Inter Milan will square up against Atafi, while Wolfsburg will battle Shakhtar Donetsk of Ukraine. The first leg will take place on March 12, while the second leg comes up a week later. With sports update, Tamara Ebiwe, NTA News. And on a sad note, the death has been announced of Mr. Festus Obafemi Fajemi Rokun, pioneer chairman of the organization Mina Branch. He was 81. The late Fajemi Rokun, who held from Okiwo on the state, studied law at the University of London and was called to the Nigerian Bar in 1974. He set up private practice in Sakoto, the capital of the defunct northwestern state, but later moved to Mina upon the creation of Niger State in 1976. He helped to nurture the Mina branch of the MBA, which he held, which he led from 1985 to 87. The late Faji Mirokun will be buried on Saturday, 29th February 2020, in Mina after a funeral service at the Cathedral Church of Saint Peter Anglican Communion, Mina. He survived by nine children, five grandchildren and five siblings and that's the news for today thanks for watching do have a wonderful weekend I'm Jum Some of the news and information given are fake.